Hello and welcome. One of the largest losses to anyone with an interest in comic book history was the passing of Steve Ditko in 2018. With him went significant insight into the early days of the comic book industry and his own unique perspective concerning pivotal moments. However, Ditko did write a fair amount of essays where he addressed some aspects of his creative process. But these works are not very well documented and very difficult to obtain. Which brings me to the focus of this video. Recently, I was able to acquire The Avenging Mind by Steve Ditko. It was an issue printed in 2008 that primarily contained nothing but written essays. Those essays mainly focused on Stan Lee. In it, Ditko recounts his perspective concerning significant events in Marvel Comics history, such as the creation of Spider-Man and Doctor Strange. It also reveals aspects of the creative process at Marvel during his time there, and, very specifically, his working relationship with Stan Lee. And, well, these essays are quite revealing. Presumably, Ditko decided to write these out as a response to various statements made by Lee throughout the years and perhaps as a refuting of the credit that was shared with Lee in the Spider-Man movies. It may be that Ditko was morally outraged that Lee was getting widespread recognition for a character that he shaped and designed. After all, Ditko, as a student of the objectivism philosophical movement, would see this crediting of Lee as a moral wrong. Philosophically and morally, Lee was getting unearned credit. As a student of objectivism, it would be Ditko's responsibility to correct this inaccuracy. Otherwise, if he chose no action, he would be permitting wrongness to continue and proliferate, which makes him as wrong and morally culpable as Stan Lee. Again, that's speculation on my part. I cannot state that's the proper context for why Ditko decided, after 40 years of silence, to add his corrections to Marvel Comics history. It's what makes sense to me, but that doesn't necessarily mean that was the actual motivation on Ditko's part. With that said, I'm going to read one essay titled, Creative Crediting. In it, Ditko, like Jack Kirby before him, greatly diminishes Lee's role in the creation of a story. Overall, it's an examination of who deserves credit and how that credit should be applied. While this isn't the most blistering essay Ditko wrote about Lee, it's certainly unflattering. For the sake of transparency, this is a slightly edited version of Ditko's essay. Every effort was made not to change the content or context of Ditko's words, but slight edits had to be done for the sake of clarity, and it's simply a practical necessity when one adapts a written essay into a spoken word piece. Now, on with the actual essay. Let's examine Lee's creative crediting method to see who benefits and who loses, how and why it's done, and if it's fair. Lee's crediting method was not in numbers, but in language, using words to conceal, manipulate, distort, or falsify the factual truth. His basic method was subjective and not objective. There's a long list of examples of Lee's creative crediting style. Script, Stan Lee, Art, Steve Ditko, written by Stan Lee and illustrated by Steve Ditko, scripted by Stan Lee and plotted and drawn by Steve Ditko. None are consistent in fact and actual meaning, and so all are non-objective and untrue. By using such terms and phrases as scripted by, script and editing by, and written by, in crediting himself, Lee implied or claimed that he had written not a synopsis, but he had actually and factually written a full script. All of these combinations of Stan's credits are all claiming or implying a full script by Lee. In using such terms and phrases as illustrated by, art by, artwork by, and illustrations in crediting me, all of which are factually, truthfully, incorrect identifications, Lee is claiming my artwork was done from his full script. Yet, Lee never wrote a full script for me. Lee's creative crediting style implied or claimed that I was only following what he fully scripted for every panel, and that I was only just illustrating all his panel ideas, his fully scripted pages slash panel ideas, that he had laid out all the necessary detail. It is essential to understand what a full script is and means. A full script contains all the needed panels for every page, and all the needed panel descriptions for the type of panel, setting, drama, action, mood, etc. The script has all the panel descriptions, all the dialogue, and sound effects. The script is a complete comic book word story and is only lacking in everything visual. 
The illustrator's job is to put the script's specific people, places, action, etc. in a composition, in a story panel picture. Lee's creative credit, labeling me as an illustrator, was claiming that I worked from his fully written script. He therefore denied me having any role in the actual comic book storyline, any role in deciding how many panels for every page, and the exact story content for every panel. I have no need to supply, decide, or solve any story drama or action problem. So I, as an illustrator, was merely following and could only follow from a full script. Lee's creative crediting meant that Lee wrote full scripts and never needed an artist, only an illustrator. His use of the labels illustrator, art, artwork, etc. were arbitrary. A more honest crediting could have been a co-creation by writer Stan Lee and artist Steve Ditko. Lee's crediting style upgraded a one to one and a half page synopsis to the creative credit status of a full script, needing only an illustrator to do the artwork. Lee thereby downgraded the need for a certain kind of artist. An authentic full script is where the scriptwriter has solved all the page slash panel problems. His every page contains panels laid out, and every panel has its needed captions, dialogue material, sound effects, and a scene description of who is involved in an action, drama, or setting, and what is going on, and how. The scriptwriter provides all the needed captions and sound effects. He is even giving or suggesting angles, such as close-ups, long shots, or down shots, and even relevant props, mood, etc. Compare a scriptwriter's 20-page script with a synopsis writer's one to one and a half page synopsis. Is anything important missing? An illustrator of a full script illustrates, makes visual, what is given in words slash writing. The full script writer provides the what and the why. The illustrator provides the how the best he can. The illustrator is relatively passive as to the storyline content of what is going on in the panels. The illustrator's main virtue is his particular art style of how he designs a panel, does faces, and figure work, whether his pen or brush technique has a stylistic or realistic visual effect. With a synopsis, the incomplete storyline material, there is an actual need for more than an illustrator and even more than an artist. A synopsis must have an artist plus. An artist plus has to take what is incomplete, what is partly provided, and add new story ideas to fill in, expand, provide everything else needed to make a complete whole word slash picture story. The artist plus has to finish a synopsis writer's work and supply and do much of what a full script writer does to take the one to one and a half page synopsis and expand it into a full page comic book story of 20 pages. The Artist Plus has to supply rough dialogue for every panel for the writer or dialoguer to polish, to provide better storytelling, continuity, etc. So every illustrator credit for a needed Artist Plus is worse than wrong. It is deliberately denying and rejecting the need, the worth, and the value of the one person who is actually making the abstract written ideas into a picture story. The Artist Plus makes the comic book writer's story idea publishable makes them able to be bought, seen, read, and enjoyed, and to go into syndication slash reprints with all their future benefits or prestige. There has never been a full Spider-Man script by Lee, so no one is entitled to any kind of full script or creator credit, or even any kind of implied full credit. That kind of full credit can only be achieved with creative crediting. And the creative crediting stunt was not done by the front office. Regrettably, the creative crediting was done by the one who was a working story slash art partner. A more honest, a more just crediting, showing the actual division of labor used in publishing comics, was needed from the very start. That shortcoming, that error, shows or demonstrates that what is not made explicit is not in conscious control. So whoever has any advantage can try to make the most of it at another's expense. The above should be more than enough to show Lee's creative crediting, claiming, and credit keeping. And it should alert, even convince, others not to accept an authority or a prestige or a claim, but to seek some real, credible proof. If what has been done or is being done wrong is not explored, not exposed, not openly and publicly examined, never to be acknowledged or corrected, then no proper principle of right and wrong behavior can be known or be possible then everyone can become an ignored victim of the seekers of the unearned, the undeserved, of injustice.
That last paragraph really gives off a Mr. A vibe, doesn't it? In other essays, Ditko elaborates a bit more on the points he brings up in this one. Namely, that Lee has only earned credit for putting into action a vague idea that was shaped and created by someone else. Lee's involvement was merely as a facilitator to the actual creator. The creation of Spider-Man being an example. The writing of Spider-Man being another example. To clarify that a bit, and to provide a little more context, for an issue of Spider-Man, Lee and Ditko would discuss a plot, or Lee would give Ditko a one or one and a half page synopsis to work from. Ditko would then, entirely on his own, break down the story and draw it. Additionally, he provided, on separate pages, dialogue and captions for Lee to reference so he knew what was happening in that story. Then Lee would polish the script for publication before sending it off to be lettered. Furthermore, according to Ditko, around issue 15 of Spider-Man, Lee had little or no involvement with plotting the story. And shortly thereafter, they didn't speak at all. So the writing credit Lee gave to himself was rather generous and factually erroneous in Ditko's opinion. All of this naturally leads to one important question. Is Ditko a reliable narrator? Despite his approach being one of facts and objectivity, it's difficult not to hear the tempered frustration and disgust in Ditko's words. So there's a level of emotionality in what he's written. Words matter, as the saying goes. And Ditko's word choices and phrasing read very accusatory. However, he does make a compelling, if not somewhat drawn out, argument. Regardless of any conclusions one might come to concerning Ditko's memory of events, or whether his passion or frustration influenced this material, what he has to say should not be discounted. Ditko's version may contradict some areas of long-repeated, rose-colored Marvel history, and that is a worthwhile area of examination, in my opinion. Perhaps the only area of critique that's worth mentioning is Ditko's endpoint. That Stan Lee's numerous claims shouldn't be accepted at face value and then accepted as true. In that, Ditko is correct. However, the only person with an insider perspective on said claims, Ditko himself, was reluctant to speak on the record in any capacity. So the only actual person who could have supplied a different perspective, who could have corrected Lee's numerous public statements, was entirely silent. Logically, without Ditko's input, it would have been very difficult to challenge Lee's statements without some contradictory evidence as a foundation. Doing otherwise just makes one look like a jerk who uses their baseless opinion to create clickbait content. So what do you think about this topic? Would you like more from Ditko's point of view? I have to admit, it might be worthwhile to do a video exploring his perspective on Spider-Man. Leave a comment below and let me know. All that's left to say is thank you for watching, or listening, whatever the case may be. Thanks to all my fine supporters on Patreon and on YouTube. If you have the ways and means, please help out. I'm about a third of the way to my overall goal of being able to do this full time. So any and all support is greatly appreciated. Extra special thanks to Phil Sagan, Edward Clayton Andrews, Corey Drew, Alexa Zernish, Brian Deaton, Johnny Lim, Steve White, Taylor Dull, and Matt Marino. You are all justified and ancient. Hey, look, a playlist. Why not watch some other videos? Until next time.